What's going on Legionnaires and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, and make sure you don't miss any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now for this video, we're going to be jumping into Heroes Reborn, issue number 7, which will be the last of this line, which will also lead into Heroes Return. Now if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on in this line. Now this is written by Jason Aaron, the art is by Aaron Cutter and Ed McGinnis. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, as we dive into issue number 7, we are brought a couple years into the past. And right now we are in the midst of a civil war. A civil war between Hyperion and Nighthawk. Because as it stands, they have been trying to pass legislation for a superhero registration. Something that Nighthawk, a politician, has strongly disagreed with. So much so that they have taken this to the streets and they have been battling hero versus hero. Most of Connecticut is sitting here in ruins. But Hyperion, he knows the truth about why all of this is beginning. This is more than just about a piece of legislation. And Hyperion tells him, you know, you're the smartest, scariest man in every room. Congratulations for that. But at the end of the day, Power Princess, she loves me. And he tells him that he needs to live to learn with this. Because if he can't, as a friend, he's telling him that he is going to die bitter and broken just like his parents but before he can get that full sentence out he is hit with a blast from nighthawk nighthawk who currently is attached to a symbiote not only that but he also got the eye of agmato from the squadron's armory a weapon that can hurt hyperion but hyperion tells him even with you getting all of these advancements even with you making yourself more powerful, at the end of the day, no one is going to win in a civil war. And we see Hyperion throw Nighthawk through buildings, through billboards, and eventually ends up carrying him up to space to try and see how the symbiote likes being put on the sun. But that's what will bring us to present day. And in present day, Power Princess and the entire squadron are sitting down right now. And she is telling them that she knows that they have had their differences. Some of these differences have been, have been event level threats at times. But it is time yet again to set aside these differences. Because now they are facing a new threat. A threat that they need to stand together and fight. Now she tells them she doesn't know who they are. She only knows what they call themselves and they call themselves the Avengers. Let's him know, you know, he's flown all over the galaxy, all over this planet, and never met any individuals calling themselves this. And Hyperion, he says that he doesn't know anything either. He doesn't know this name Avengers, but he does know that something is off. Something is going weird right now. And this is where he kind of opens up. And he lets them all know that he's had a rather troubling week. There was something that Bruce Banner had said to him the other day as he was killing him. And that something sent him searching in the Arctic. Where he found someone in the ice. Or at least where someone was in the ice. Someone that had been long forgotten and left there. And Power Princess tells him this isn't making any sense. And he knows this. He knows that none of this is making sense. And that seems to be the prime problem. There seems to be something wrong with the world. Something that seems to be right in front of their faces, but they just can't see it. Now, Dr. Spectrum, he sees this to be complete nonsense. He thinks they're just blabbering on and have no idea what they're talking about. And as everybody's having this discussion, Power Princess looks over at Nighthawk because this entire time, he hasn't said a single word. And so the world's greatest detective you would think that he has something to say on this subject. And when prompted, when they ask him his thoughts on this, his only question is the Hyperion because he asks, where in the Arctic did all of this happen? And that's what will bring Dr. Spectrum and Blur to the Arctic. They've come to the location where Steve Rogers once was. And Dr. Spectrum using his power prism to try to pick up any kind of uh, unique signatures that might be present. Signatures that may represent something like Hyperion, some kind of alien race, anything that can give them a clue to who this individual may have been. But after doing a scan, 
he finds he doesn't find anything out of the normal. Hyperion up in space, he has come he's come across the the aircraft of Rocket Raccoon, the spaceship. Now he tears this thing apart, but he doesn't find anything. He doesn't find Starbrand, he doesn't find any clues to any kind of Avengers. The only thing he did find was Groot, a little plant that kept on calling calling its name. And Hyperion, he said that he took care of it. And with that, we see a giant explosion and Rocket Raccoon, his spaceship literally goes up in flames. And I don't think I've ever hated anybody more in my life than I do right now after Hyperion just killed Groot. But that's what will take us to Nighthawk and Power Princess. And right now, they are going over all of the information they currently have. They are going over all of their all of their video footage. This shows the Avengers showing up there and rescuing Echo. You know, they see the Star Spangled Man, they see Blade, but what really what really stands out to them is the Phoenix. Because this is a force that they thought was dead. Power Princess killed Jean Grey herself, ripped her apart. But at this point in their lives, they both know that something that dies doesn't necessarily stay dead. And they learned this a couple years ago up in Canada, when they were going head to head with Weapon X. And Weapon X, he currently has his claws dug deep into Hyperion. And with his claws going into his chest, we see Hyperion die. And all of Squadron Supreme, they start rushing in to avenge his death, only to have Alpha Flight. We see them arise for their final battle. And so presumably, Hyperion lived. You know, we have to assume that he's alive now, this took place in the past. And so when they're referring to seeing things die and coming back, this is exactly what they're talking about. Now currently, Dr. Spectrum and Nighthawk, they're up in space. They're scanning the Earth right now for, for some kind of meteorite. A meteorite that once landed on Earth and has now been hidden from all of civilization. And Nighthawk, he has a hunch and he tells, he tells Dr. Spectrum to make sure he scans the entire continent of Africa. And that's what will bring us to Ravencroft Asylum. Inside of Ravencroft, we have Power Princess and Blur currently investigating and interrogating Goblin. Because they need to find out as much information as they can about Echo. About the individual who now holds the power of the Phoenix. Now, he doesn't really give us much information. He taunts, he teases, he jokes about how he killed the Silver Witch, or he led to her killing herself. And he tries to manipulate Power Princess, tries to get inside of her mind. And that's because Goblin knows one specific thing about her. That when Power Princess arrived on the, the world of man, when she returned home, she brought back with her a virus. This virus ended up killing the entirety of her utopia. All her people had to had succumbed to this. Now, Power Princess, she's not Nighthawk. She's not Hyperion. She's not any of these dudes out here trying to, trying to keep them alive. And we see her snap breaking the glass and smashing down on his chest. We see her literally kill Goblin right here on the spot. And that's what's going to take us to a little bit later. Because right now, the big three, they are arguing. And usually when they argue, lots of buildings end up, end up getting blown up, explosions are happening. And so they're a little on edge right now. Dr. Spectrum and Blur, they're, they're down here kind of worried. So Blur decides that he's going to eavesdrop on this conversation. He's going to find out exactly what they are discussing. And of course, they're arguing about what they always do, about starting wars. Because right now, Nighthawk, he wants to go into this country without White House approval. And given the international implications, they want to be, be able to give President Colson the ability to have plausible deniability. Little does Blur know, currently, Dr. Spectrum, he has a lines of communication open up with the president. And so the president is eavesdropping on the entirety of this conversation. But all Dr. Spectrum really knows is that they need to find out who the Avengers are and they need to find out exactly what they want. And then Blur makes an observation. 
posing the question, you know, do you ever think that life might be easier or life used to be a lot simpler? But Dr. Spectrum tells him that the evidence is pretty clear. The evidence is right in front of you because without them, that's what kind of world you get. One where presidents get gunned down in the street, like President Fury, the howling commander-in-chief. And so they truly do believe that they are doing what is best for humanity. But that's what will take us to the African savannah. And right now, they are currently scanning for anything. Now, they know this is the location. The prism is letting Dr. Spectrum know that whatever they're looking for, it's here. Blur running all over the place, but he's not finding a single thing. He figured if there were something hidden out here, by now he would have ran into it. But he knows that there is something there because usually he can be able to run through things. And he found something that he can't actually run through. And this is when Nighthawk, he pulls up and lets them all know that the Phoenix, the readings from the Arctic, and the star brand from Spectrum's battle in space, the atmospheric disturbances with the Asgardian, the trail of the Daywalker known as Blade, all of it leads back to this single location. So whatever is here, it is here. And this is where we see, we see Blur start using his, his super speed to start hacking into the system to be able to break down the Wakanda walls. And that's exactly what we see. We see the force field start to fade and we see Wakanda start to come into view. And, and Squadron Supreme, they are standing here ready to do battle. Ready to fight these guys. Power Princess wanting to make the first strike. Wanting to make sure that they have the element of surprise on their side. Before they realize that their, their perimeter has been breached. But this is where they realize it's already too late. Because they have already figured this out. They already know who is here. And this is where we see the Phoenix. We see Thor, Starbrand, Blade, and of course the one and only Captain America. And Cap is letting them know that he doesn't think so. But he will be taking back his reality. And this is where we hear him say... Avengers Assemble. But this is when we're taken to the White House. To President Coulson having a conversation with Ross and Jameson. Playing back the recording of everything that was said between Dr. Spectrum and Blur. All the incident that is about to go on. Avengers, so on and so forth. Now Jameson and Ross, they have no idea who they're talking about. But they're immediately getting on the phone. Calling the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Calling everybody under the sun to start setting up meetings. And figuring out exactly who these individuals they're going after might be. And while these two are, are jumping into high gear, we see the president reach into his desk. Inside his desk is a pistol. He pulls it out and he guns down both Ross and Jameson in cold blood. Standing over their bodies, he lets his secretary know to prepare a press release of the assassinations of both Ross and Jameson by sleeper agents of Wakanda. And out of the shadows, this is where we see Mephisto. And Mephisto lets him know that he did good. Because the more people hear that word, the more they hear the word Avengers, the more cracks start to show in their little world that they have created. Now the president lets us know that there weren't supposed to be any Avengers. There must have been something that they missed. But Mephisto says that this is nothing that can't be fixed. The only thing they have to do is kill Captain America. And right now, President Coulson, he is feeling as if he he just shouldn't have left Captain America in that ice. Maybe being a little nostalgic, maybe even emotional, maybe a little sentimental, but he made a mistake. In doing this, it could unravel this entire reality that they have created. Now the question poses what to do with Squadron Supreme. Because one, they can't call them back. They could try, but Squadron Supreme probably wouldn't listen. And the issue is, if Squadron Supreme is to fall, if they fall to the Avengers, it could be the, the, the end of Mephisto and Coulson's little world they created. And so they can't call the squadron back. They can't bomb Wakanda without drawing the world's attention. And so Coulson feels like there is only one way to handle this. The same way he remade the world in the image of Mephisto. By doing it himself using a pandemonium cube. 
And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Like I have said before, Heroes Reborn has been so much fun. I have thoroughly enjoyed this line. I know a lot of people have issues with the power sets and the power scaling and how strong some of these individuals are and how Galactus has become a punching bag for a lot of Marvel stories. Like, I get it. I, I understand where you guys are coming from. But me, personally, I take this story with a grain of salt. This isn't in the main continuity. This isn't a main storyline. I see this as, as Jason, Paul, or Jason Aaron just having fun with this. Really thoroughly enjoying just being able to take Squadron Supreme, characters that aren't heavily used in the Marvel aspect at all, and being able to create these really awesome stories that are extremely exaggerating Superman and Batman and Green Lantern and all of our our great DC heroes. But it's also getting an opportunity to showcase some Marvel heroes that may not get a spotlight also as well. So I have to say I am thoroughly excited for Heroes Return. I think it is going to be an awesome battle with some amazing artwork. I, I cannot wait for it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you don't miss any of the content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.